how could they? God seed is deep inside of them. God seed, God seed. That seed of God carries the genetics of God. And that genetics, a particular genetics it carries, is a genetic composition called love. Praise be the Lord. I bring you greetings, my viewer, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are welcome again to another episode of Kingdom First Half Hour, brought to you courtesy of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal of Nigeria, Abuja Archdiocese. It's another opportunity for us to look intently at the perfect law of liberty, the Word of God that liberates, the Word of God that heals, sanctifies, delivers, and prepares a man for every good work in God. I want to bless God for you that you are here. Why don't you bow your head? Let's pray as we proceed in this brief time of sharing God's word. I pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious Father, we thank you. Thank you that you are patient with us. Thank you that you have promised never to leave us as orphans. Thank you that your love is so wide, we can't go out of it. It's so deep, we cannot go to the bottom of it. Your love is so high, no man can go above it. Your love is constant. Again, we thank you for drawing us this evening by your love. You have been waiting always for us to return, even to the original purpose you created us. That is a work with you, communion with you, intimacy with you. Lord, this evening we ask that your word will come again to us. Let it come as fire. Let it consume everything that is not of you in any life. Let it consume and bring to nothing every works of Satan. Let your word come as the light. Let it reveal our emptiness without you. Let your word come as the hammer. Let it break every stronghold of the enemy. Thank you, gracious Father. You, our teacher, will not be hidden in a corner. Speak to us, O Lord. In grace, let your word come. In power and great conviction, let it come. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, and we have prayed. Amen. Viewers, we continue today in our series. Our series has been the mandate of the Lord Jesus to set the earth on fire. And today, as part of the pathways to the fire, we shall be looking at a message we have titled, The Quarry Site Experience. God is a consuming fire. And it is God's will that His own children shall also the channels of his fire. God's fire is the one that purifies, the one that sanctifies, the one that sets a man free from everything that is not of God. All right, let's turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 12. That's the first scripture we want to consider this evening as we look at the quarry experience, part of the preparation to be God's channel of fire. Luke chapter 12, from verse, let's start from verse 4 to 7. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For to whomsoever much is given, of whom, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of them they will ask the more. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I, if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized, and I am distressed till it be accomplished. Let's stop there for now, as the Lord blesses his word in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. The first thing I want us to note from that scripture is the word preparation. That scripture says, the servant who knew his master's will, who knew the Lord's will, and prepared not himself for it, and did not do that will, he said that servant shall receive so much stripes. Our emphasis this evening is on the word preparation. He said that servant prepared not himself. And that became the reason why he was not able to do the will, even though he knew it. When we are dealing with the quarry site experience, the quarry experience, I need you to know that we are dealing with the matter of preparation. 
We are dealing with the matter of preparation. We live in an age whereby several people are interested in results, but they are not ready for the procedure and the processing that produces the result. We talk about results, we celebrate results, we, are, we admire results, but only a few are even ready to go through the processing, to go through the procedure that produces this result. Several prefer to cut corners, several prefer the easy way out, several prefer what we call in our local balance, we will go to the answer, just get the answer. We have even brought some worldly terms into Christianity, saying the end justifies the means, but I need you to know that God's standard is still very short, and it cannot be lowered. It is lack of preparation that has reduced the quality of Christian life and witnessing in this our age. Our nation is so religious and so churchious. Every new and cranny, you see churches, prayer houses springing up here and there. Several digits go on in this nation. Several religious activities go on. Yet, little Minimal fruit, minimal experience of life is seen in the society. Oftentimes you hear of embezzlement of money in government circles. You hear of all kinds of compromise. And you check very well. It is still those who go in and out of church. Several have occupied two pits. Several are in the work of God today. But little or not of God's kingdom is being preached or advanced. A preacher once said that the work of God is largely undone in this our generation because undone men who have omitted the quarry experience, undone men who have avoided, omitted the preparation of God's fire are those who are going up and down preaching the name of God. Somewhere in the word of God in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah went about preaching not until the word of God says in Isaiah 6 verse 1, in the year King Uzzah died, he saw the Lord. And eventually he got a fire treatment that changed his direction, that changed his life, that prepared him to be a better vessel in the hand of God, that prepared him and equipped him with the tongue of fire and the sword of fire with which he brought the word of God that affected his generation. My prayer for you this day is that as we hear this word, may today be the day that every Uzziah that has spared your life, let today be their end in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's take our second scripture quickly. We want to describe what this quarry means. And we also look at the examples of men and women who pass through this quarry and what it produced in their life. We're also going to look at the examples of some who omitted this fire and what it produced in their life. Let's just read one verse of the scripture once more. First Kings chapter 6 and verse 7. I found this verse of the Bible very interesting and an eye-opener. First Kings 6 verse 7 is what we are reading. And the temple, when it was in building, was built of stone, made ready before it was brought there, so that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron hard in the house while it was in building. As I'm reading my Bible and as I'm learning Jesus as in discipleship, one of the lessons I've come to learn is that God is very meticulous. God is very careful about the kind of man he commits his work to. God does not just begin to use anybody. It amazes me that any time God gives a man work to do, he always gives him a pattern. When Noah was to build an ark, there was a pattern. When Moses was to construct a tabernacle in the wilderness, God spoke to him very clearly. In Exodus 25 verse 40, first God called him up to the mount, sat on him for days, and showed him clearly the pattern for the building. And in Exodus 25 verse 40, God said to him, make sure you build according to this pattern. Don't shift to the left or to the right. Keep to this pattern. Be faithful to it. I'm also looking at that as this temple was being constructed, the process, the procedure was clearly marked out. Whereas the Old Testament speaks about physical issues 
I need you to know that they are only a shadow of what the temple of God represents in the New Testament. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, the word of God says, We all are God's building, being built up into a spiritual house where God dwells by His Spirit. So actually, this physical temple is talking about the human body. It's talking about the human life. It's talking about God building a life to the point where that life can be the type that God can use. I need you to know that this principle, he said, when the temple was being built, all the stones used in building this temple were prepared at the quarry. The quarry site is a place of preparation. The quarry site is a place of dealing. The quarry site is a place where God cuts a man, where God puts a man on the furnace and works on the life of that man to remove everything that will spoil the work of God, to remove everything that will contaminate the work, to remove every crudeness. The quarry site is like a refining pot. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 3, the word of God says, He will sit as a refiner. He will refine the sons of Jacob. He will refine the children of Levi, till they can bring offering in righteousness. When a man omits the quarry site, it affects everything about that man. It affects everything concerning that man. As I look at the scriptures, I noted that all the men that affected their generation, all the men that God used, and today we can hear of them, their life is still speaking, were men that God deliberately, deliberately took to the quarry site, sat on their lives, trained them by discipline, by life issues, life challenges, and by the fire of the word of God. I've also noted that every other man, those who did not amount to anything, were also men who omitted this quarry site experience. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. When Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, from verse 47 down to that 49 and 50, saying, I have come to set the earth on fire. Actually, what it means is that he is looking for, he is looking for lives who have offered themselves as a living sacrifice. Lives who have laid their all at the altar of God, so that he can set their lives on fire. The fire of God's revival, the fire of God's healing, the fire of God's deliverance, the fire of God's liberation. So they can set their lives on this fire. They themselves will be burning with this fire and will be used as instrument to set others on fire as well. And what he is dealing with here is that any man, first and foremost, the principle of the quarry site is that that man has to first offer himself. Those stones we are being prepared because there is a particular space, a particular portion for each stone to fit in the temple. And their rawness, their situation at the moment does not permit that they could fit into it. Hence, they need for that preparation at the quarry site. In the same way, before God can use a man, he prepares that man. From the beginning, Genesis 2 verse 9, the word of God said, And God put in the garden the man he had formed. There is first and foremost a formation before ascending. We live in a generation whereby several people send themselves to the work of God. Several people send themselves into the things of God without allowing God to first prepare them. All the men in the scriptures, like I said earlier, they were all prepared. Joseph had this preparation. He had his preparation in from the pit down to Potiphar's house, down to the prison. All of these were acquiring sight experiences in the life of Joseph. Hence, when God fixed him to the point where he will be usable, Joseph did not disappoint. His life actually set the whole Egypt on God's fire. Actually, Pharaoh said in Genesis chapter 41, verse 40, By your word shall all Israel be ruled. This is because Joseph passed through this quarry experience. Moses tried to send himself to God's work. And he heard a voice saying to him, Who made you a ruler over us? The Bible says Moses fled Egypt because he saw him who was invisible. 
and went to the wilderness of Media. There he took another 40 years of his life for God to walk on that man in the quarry site of Media. And when that man becomes sendable, God now told him, Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh. It is important to note that this being this channel of fire which this quarry site experience prepares a man for is essential and is necessary. God himself is a consuming fire. And Jesus said, somewhere again in the word of God, he said, John baptized with water. In a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost. John himself has already prepared and uh, prophesied. Say, I baptize you with water, but he that is coming is my chair and I who baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. The issue of fire is grossly mis misused and abused in our generation. Several persons speak of fire arrogantly. Several persons use it just to talk down people or to destroy their so-called enemy. But the fire we are talking about here is not the fire for vengeance, so to say. It's not the fire to settle scores. It's not the fire to deal with perceived enemies. We're talking about the fire that purifies. The fire that first purges a man of every rottenness. The fire that quickens a man. The fire that mobilizes a man. The fire that sets a man in motion to be all that God wants him to be. It is this kind of fire that ends all argument. Every proud reasoning about God is brought down when this fire is at work. In 1 Kings 18, when Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal and asked them to call down fire, they tried and tried, they couldn't. The word of God said when it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah first repaired the altar. Because this fire is first based on one's relationship with God. Elijah first repaired the altar, laid the sacrifice, there must be sacrifice on the altar. The quarry site is a place of absolute surrender. It is where a man lays his all at the altar of God. Then this fire came. The story of Elijah so much challenged me. The Bible said he asked the prophets of Baal to keep pouring water. They poured water that the sacrifice and the altar was drained with water. We are filled with water. And the word of God said Elijah prayed. And when fire came down, the fire licked all the water, burnt the sacrifice, consumed everything, and they brought a sweet aroma to heaven. And the Bible says, everyone there acclaim the Lord is God. So the kind of fire we are talking about is not strange fire. It's not the type that the sons of Aaron offered and God struck them dead. Strange fire spreads so much in this our generation. Heaven is looking for those carriers of genuine fire. Carriers of the fire that burns. The fire that when you come near a man carrying fire, you cannot be normal again. A man on fire is not normal. A man on fire has emergency in his message. He has a sense of urgency. Fire does not take any excuse. Anywhere fire enters, there is emergency there. And it is this kind of fire that this generation needs. It is this kind of fire that everyone that names the name of God must be crying for. Actually, there cannot be Christianity without God's fire burning in a man. A normal Christian, a genuine Christian, must be burning with God's fire. That is why there is need for you to allow God to take you to this quarry site and work on your life, refine you by His word, roast you by the fire of His word, and discipline you. Let's read one more scripture before we draw issues to pray. I'm reading Mark 9, 49. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, wherewith will you season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. Like I said earlier, fire is that that quickens. Every food, in fact, every meat has its own aroma. But as long as that meat is raw, as long as that food is raw, there won't be any aroma springing out. There won't be any sweet-smelling aroma that draws men to it. You'll agree with me that it is only when a woman begins to cook food and the food is getting done that the aroma begins to attract. 
This is how a normal Christian life should be. It should be a life that attracts others to God. A life spreading the aroma of God. And that scripture says, everyone shall be sorted with fire. Beloved, everyone includes you. When will you be tired of this, your rawness? You are so crude. You are so crude. You are so crude. That is why your life has not affected anyone for God. Nobody can use crude oil for crude oil's sake. That is why crude oil needs to go through a refining, what we call refinery, so that it will be useful. It will be useful for other things that men need. A Christian life ought not to be crude. It ought not to be filled with a mixture of worldliness and religious activities. That is why you need this fire. Beloved, I announce to you that you need this fire. I announce to you that this fire first will come on you for conversion, like it came on Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, to come on you for purging. Then it comes on you as fire to be in God's service. The first scripture we read in Luke 12, verse 47, it says, that servant who knew the Lord's way, but did not prepare himself for it. The quarry site experience is for you to get prepared. There is a preparation before God can use a man. God cannot use any man in his crudeness. God cannot use any man when he's still raw. That is why there is need. Say, everyone shall be sorted with fire. Every sacrifice shall be sorted with salt. This is how a Christian life should be, a normal Christian life. It's not just the issue of going to church and dance and dance and give one or two naira as offering and come out. It's not the issue of doing bargaining with God like Jacob. It's the issue of surrendering your life totally to God, laying your all at the altar, and attracting the fire of God so that your life will be the type that brings a sweet-smelling fragrance of Christ, the aroma that draws men to God, the aroma that men perceive, and they testify that God is at work here. This is what your life should be. You are not in church just to service the ego of the so-called man of God. There is a portion for you in the temple. There is a portion for you in the church. Jesus said, I will build my church. Simply because this quarry site is omitted. The Lord is calling you tonight to bow your head in prayer as we pray. We are going to focus on John chapter 12, verse 1 and to 7. There is an experience of this offering that someone did. And that's where I want us to charge ourselves. As we call on the Lord, trusting that if today you have heard his word, had it not your heart. It's the story of Mary of Bethany. The Bible said, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, when, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and matter served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Verse 3. Then took Mary a pound of ointment, a very costly perfume, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then says one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this perfume sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Let's stop there for now. Mary offered her all to Jesus. He laid her all at the feet of Jesus. That is a symbol of laying your all at the altar. And the Bible says the whole house was filled with the ointment. The reason for the quarry site is so that there will not be noise at the temple. There will not be the noise of worldliness, the noise of carnal attitudes, the noise of carnal behavior fills the church today because majority have omitted the quarry site. The Lord is calling you this evening. Have you all at the altar lay? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing blood? Have you been to Jesus for the baptism of fire? Maybe you are just content with the baptism of water. That is not enough. John said, I baptize you with water. But he that is coming is mighty. I will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. This fire is coming first for your conversion and for your purging. Then to equip you for useful work. Whichever category you are this evening, the Lord is calling you to bow your head. The Lord is calling you to bow your head. We began by saying that the ulcer of your life must give way. The ulcer of your life must give way. Are you still far from him? Are you still living your life in a manner that does not become of God? 
The issue is that until you are treated by fire, then the judgment fire is coming for you. Only those who have been treated by this fire, they are those who will not be driven away from the presence of God in eternity into the fire that burns without getting burnt, the fire that burns without quenching. God did not make hell for you. Hell was made for the devil and his demons. Why are you preparing to end here? This is an opportunity for you to cry unto the Lord, beloved. Are you crying unto the Lord? Like I said earlier, if you are not a channel of God's fire, then you are a channel of the devil's destructive fire. Our Father, we beg you this evening, as your word has come, you said in Jeremiah 23, verse 29, it's not my word like fire. Let this word, let it burn, let it burn. As he born in the heart of those two disciples on the way to Emmaus, they turned their back where they had faced before. Lord, this evening, as this fire is burning, as this your word is making a mighty entrance in the heart of that young man, in the heart of that woman, in the heart of that man, oh God, let this fire, let it achieve the purpose you are sending it. Let it consume everything that is not of you. Let this fire consume every heart of stone. Let it bring about a conversion of heart. Let it bring about a change of mind. Let it bring about a change of purpose and direction. As many who are turning stones to bread in the name of ministry, let this fire, O oh Lord, roast every greed, everything that represents worldliness, everything that represents Egyptian garment. Let this fire deal with it once and for all in the name of Jesus. Gracious Father, we beg you, Lord. We beg you, Father, set us in motion. Give us, Lord, thy unction. Anoint us for thy work. Baptize us in thy fire, Lord. Set us, Lord, in motion. Clothe us, Lord, in holiness. Help us to burn and shine for thy cause. Help us to continue, Lord, to burn and shine for thy cause till you, your church, revive. Till we, your glory, see. Gracious Father, that's our cry. That's our cry. Draw us to the secret place where you make your man. Draw us to the quarry site where you walk on a man. Draw us to become channels of your fire, that your judgment fire may not come upon us. Thank you, gracious Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, and we have prayed. Amen. Beloved, this world of God has come as an opportunity for you to have a rethink. I'm asking that you continue in what you have had. As you open your Bible and study more, and commune with the Lord, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will reveal more to you. But adventure, you have need to talk with us or for us to pray with you. The numbers are there on the screen. You can always reach us. Our prayer is that this word you have heard today will not stand against you in judgment. God bless you as you continue in the word you have heard. We are still Catholic Charismatic Renewal of Nigeria Abuja Archdiocese. God bless you to meet again next week.